Okay, here's a tutorial on the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, some of you know the Pythagorean Theorem, or at least have used it. Um, so what I'm going to do is quickly just kind of review it with you, show you where it came from, and then talk about some extensions uh, using the Pythagorean Theorem. Remember that Pythagorean Theorem is a relationship between the legs, the two shorter sides, and the hypotenuse, the longest side of right triangles. So real quickly, just to make sure you understand, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. The two sides that aren't the hypotenuse are called legs. So the legs are the perpendicular sides that make the right angle, and the longest side is the hypotenuse. And here we have the Pythagorean theorem relationship that we're talking about, where A and B both represent legs. So another way to think about it was leg squared plus leg squared, and C represents the hypotenuse equals hypotenuse squared. That's the relationship. That's the way that I'd love for you to think about this, not just A's, B's, and C's as variables, but the leg squared plus the leg squared, the two smaller sides, if you square them and add them together, that should be equal to the square of the longest side. Um, where this comes from is... You know, over time we recognize the relationship between these two squares here that have these four right angles in the corners. And what we realize is that the area of the square, the larger square, is equal to the area of the smaller square plus the area of these four triangles. And with that, we can also kind of pick up on some things on how the length of these sides of the smaller square, how they are related to each of the hypotenuses of the, of these triangles in the corner. Um, so what I have kind of spelled out for you here is how we would find the area of each piece of this picture. So the area of the big square would be the sum of these two sides, sorry, the sum of these two pieces, to make this entire side. So this entire side would be A plus B. So A plus B. And remember, when you find the area of a square, it's just the side length times the side length. So this would be A plus B as well. So the area of the larger, squ larger square would be A plus B quantity squared. Well, if you FOIL that out or double distribute, this is the statement you would get. All right, the area of the smaller square is just going to be side times side, or C times C, which is C squared. Then the area of the smaller triangles is going to be one-half base times height, or one-half A times B. So we've got four of those triangles, so we're going to do four times one-half A times B. So four times a half is two, so two times AB. So remember what we said, the area of the larger triangle, which is here, is equal to the area of the smaller, sorry, I said smaller triangle, area of the larger square, which is here, is equal to the area of the smaller square plus the four triangles. So what we could do is to show that they're equal, you see that you've got a 2AB on both sides, we could subtract that off. And that's where the Pythagorean theorem just came from. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And again, don't think about that as three variables as much as you need to think about that as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Now, a lot of the examples that you work with are um, what we call Pythagorean triples, where all three sides, where all three sides are um, whole numbers. So when we run into those whole numbers, when we run into those whole numbers, um, if all three sides are whole numbers, we call that a Pythagorean triple. Now, to try to help make things not be ugly with decimals, a lot of times we give you Pythagorean theorem, sorry, Pythagorean triples as examples to work with when practicing the Pythagorean theorem. But the reality is, is those things are pretty rare. Pythagorean triples are pretty rare. Most right triangle sides have at least one side that's not a whole number. But if we do get a set of three positive integers, integers are whole numbers, then that would be a Pythagorean triple. So just a, 
An example of a Pythagorean triple is three, four, five. So I'm just going to show you why it's a Pythagorean triple. So if all three, if the three sides of a right triangle are three, four, and five, the two shorter sides would be legs. So three and four are my legs, and the longest side, five, would have to be my hypotenuse. So this is the Pythagorean theorem set up. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25, and 25 is equal to 25. So because 3, 4, and 5 are all positive integers, 3, 4, and 5 make a Pythagorean triple, or a right triangle where all three sides are positive integers. We can also use the Pythagorean theorem to help us find out if a triangle's sides will make a right triangle or not. For instance, we know that the legs and the hypotenuse of a right triangle have the Pythagorean theorem relationship in common every single time. But if that relationship is not true, then we can know for a fact that that's not a right triangle. And we can determine, all right, if it's not a right triangle, then it must be either acute or obtuse. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem to help us do that in an inequality. So let me show you what I mean. So if, for instance, the leg squared plus the leg squared is greater than the hypotenuse squared, then that's going to be an acute triangle. What that means is that the third side, the hypotenuse, though it's the longest side by itself, it must not be incredibly long because the two smaller sides when squared and added together they were bigger so that means that the the side that's the largest which is across from the largest angle must not have been that big so not that big of angles acute angles all the angles are acute must be an acute triangle now you could go through the opposite of that and say okay if the if the hypotenuse squared is larger than the sum of the squares of the two legs then it must be really 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 long and the longer that side is the larger the angle across from it has to be because I have to open up the angle wide enough to be able to touch the two ends of that side so the bigger that angle gets the more obtuse it's going to be so big 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 angles are across from really long sides obtuse triangle so if the leg squared plus leg squared is bigger than the hypotenuse the hypotenuse isn't very big must be an acute triangle if a leg squared plus leg squared is smaller than the hypotenuse squared then the hypotenuse is really big really big hypotenuse really big angle across from it obtuse okay here we got a couple of examples where we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if it's going to be an acute or an obtuse or a right triangle so um, 9 and 40 are the shorter of the two, of the three sides, so those must be legs. So 9 squared plus 40 squared, and we're trying to figure out what its relationship to 41 squared is. So is it less than, greater than, or equal to? That's what we're trying to figure out. So in your calculator, really quickly, you can figure this out, and we can find out what their sum of their squares are. So 9 squared is 81. Now, 40 squared is a little bit bigger. Let's see what we get here. 1,600. And then 41 squared, 1,681. So if you have 1,600 plus 81, we get 1,681. Well, 1,681 is equal to 1681. Therefore, this is a right triangle because leg squared plus leg squared was equal to hypotenuse squared okay these are the smaller of the two so they're the legs 10 squared plus 49 squared and we're checking to see if it's less than greater than or equal to for uh, 50 squared so in your calculator 100 plus let's see what 49 squared is 2401 50 squared is 2,500. You add these two together, you get 2,501. And unfortunately, that's not equal to 2,500. 
2,501 is actually larger than, so remember that the alligator mouth bites the larger amount. So if leg squared plus leg squared is greater than the hypotenuse squared, that means the hypotenuse isn't that big, which means it's not across from a very big angle, which means we're working with an acute triangle. We'll try one more example. These are the two legs, 12 and 16, so they're going to be together. And then 24 is going to be my hypotenuse, and it's going to be by itself. So 144 plus 256. And I'm checking to see what its relationship is with 576. And 144 plus 256 was 400. And 400 is less than 576, which means the hypotenuse is bigger than the two legs added together after they're squared. So it must be really, really, really big. And if it's really, really big, it's across from a really, really big angle, which means... This is an obtuse triangle. Okay, to finish up, I'm going to do an example of one of these triangle problems and one of these word problems a little bit lower from your notes. So I'm just going to pick number four here as it looks kind of complicated with this radical. Now, again, the two sides that form the right angle, they're the legs. So four squared plus four square root of three quantity squared should be equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now, that's different from, say, something like number two, where I would have 10 squared plus x squared is equal to 20 squared as I don't know what one of the legs are compared to not knowing what the hypotenuse is. So that's a slight difference in the equation. Let's go ahead and finish out number four. Four squared is 16. Now you might need your calculator or you might be able to recognize what's going on here. Remember when you square a square root Square root of 3 squared, that's the same as the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. So look at the relationship between the, what I started with and what I ended with. Square roots and raising something to the second power or squaring it, they're inverse operations. So they essentially cancel each other out. So really what I'm looking at here is 4 squared times 3 equals x squared. So 16 plus 16 times 3 equals x squared, or 16 plus 48 equals x squared. And then now I could just add 16 and 48, and that's going to give me 64. And now in order to get x by itself, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. Now keep in mind, I'm going to end up with two answers, but in this real-world scenario, um, for plus or minus 8 equals x, I'm not going to be able to have a side length of negative 8. So I can get rid of the negative and just focus on x being 8 for this geometric scenario. If these were just numbers, having a negative 8 is just fine. But when it comes to triangles, we can't have negative side lengths. Okay, so we're going to do this uh, example here with you. The, um, the word problem has, uh, this is Sarah right here. She's the star of the word problem. And we're going to just kind of work through this together and label our picture correctly. Sarah has let out 50 meters of kite string when she observes that her kite is directly above Ella. All right, so we need to add Ella to our picture. She is here so that the kite is directly above her. The kite string is 50 meters. All right, remember this is Ella and this is Sarah. All right, and there's our kite up here. All right, if Sarah is 35 meters from Ella, so this distance is 35, how high up is the kite? Okay, so this is the distance here, and again, that distance is 50 represented by the string. So straight up and down from the ground is how we measure height, so we know that that's going to be perpendicular. Again, it says that is Sarah is 35 meters from Ella. So this leg here is 35 meters. They want to know how high off the ground is the kite. So that's why I put my X there. So now 35 and X have to be my legs. 35 squared plus X squared. And that should be equal to the 50 squared as that is my hypotenuse. 35 squared is 1,225 plus X squared equals... 50 squared, which is 2,500. I'm going to subtract 1,225 
from both sides, x squared is equal to 1,275.